Today you will learn how to draw simple straight hair and complicated curly hair types using different drawing styles. Once you finish this tutorial, you will have the information and confidence to draw all hairstyles from reference and imagination. Welcome, it's going to be a great day. These are some of the brushes for hair I downloaded that you'll see me using in this tutorial. They are available from the Clip Studio assets on the Clip Studio website. There will be a link down below. From here, I will be using the Elegant Tapered Pen and the Fast Hair Tools. Otherwise, I will be using the pre-installed G-Pen, Blend, Blur, and Fingertip Tools. The final tool to mention is a recreated G-Pen from the previous version of Mango Studio. I really like that pen and created a version of it for myself in Clip Studio Paint. You can use the tools you prefer to fit your drawings in illustration style and painting style. Now let's start drawing. I'm going to do this illustration first and then more illustrations where I break down the process of creating here in different styles using pencil, oil, paint, line art, and manga style. You see, I've already had my sketch done. I'm laying down colors to build up the values. I'm using the oil paint brush. I rarely use pure black when painting because it doesn't exist in the real world. This way I don't get an artificial look. I use a big brush to get even colors without any strokes in it. When drawing heads that are far away and are small, don't miniaturize. Don't attempt to suggest hair strands, just draw shapes and a lock should be less detailed. It's good to start with photo reference to sensitize yourself to how hair behaves and looks. Because when you're drawing comics, you won't be able to find a reference for every pose and angle and windswept hair. I erase what I don't want so I can get the shape of the hair. That's why I wasn't concerned about going outside of the lines of my pencil sketch. Hair is the thread-like outgrowths that grow on the body. Hair is weird and the word hair is weird because it stands for the plural and singular designations. Strand is a single hair, yet we also have a head of hair. Then we also have all these words to suggest a plurality. Tuft, clump, bunch, knot, cluster, tuffet, lock, and wisp. All mean a bunch or a collection of hair. For our purposes, we are gonna use the word lock. Many strands are a lock of hair. We will call it lock because it sounds more romantic than clump, bunch, cluster, and wisp was in the running. However, it doesn't roll off the tongue in this context very well. Now I'm using the fast hairbrush to build up the illusion of strands. You never want to try to draw each strand of hair. I'm working loosely because I'm building a foundation that will be helpful for me later. Next, I use the Elegant Tapered Pen. Now I'm adding large strokes and strands on the edges. From this point, I'm using a darker color, yet still staying away from pure black.
My purpose is not to teach you how to draw like me. I'll be using a few different styles to teach you how to create hair that will fit your drawing styles. And vary your strand thickness and length. Make some a little bit shorter and others longer. Keep it random. Have fun. I'm adding a fair value here to build my highlights because they blend into the hair. They don't just suddenly appear. Then I use the fingertip blending brush to distort it into the stroke direction of the hair. Now I'm using a lighter color for precise line. And the blur on those lines. Next, a fast hair brush with a variety of strokes. Now the hair is starting to shine. Okay, let's wrap everything up here and give you some final thoughts. Drawing the strands of hair is where you add details and texture. If you want to use custom brushes, and this is the point where you want to use them, experiment with any brush that has a texture to it. I use exclusion blend mode on my sketch layer because I can't see my pencil strokes anymore and I need to see them so I can see where I will place my lighter strands of hair that reflect the light, even though it's in the shadows. I blend and blur those strokes using different values and lengths of hair. Then I come back in with more precise lines. Now I'm going to use a transparent mode on the fast hair brush. When the brushes are transparent, it acts like an eraser with more control. Unlike an eraser, it keeps the characteristic of the brush that I'm already using. So it matches the strokes I've already made. There have been many hairstyles since the beginning of civilization. It would be hard to count the number of hairstyles that exist, even in this century alone. There's too many cultures, too many people all over the world. So instead of trying to teach you how to draw hairstyles, I would teach you how to draw all the hair types 
to illustrate, draw, or paint any hairstyle you desire, and in your own drawing style. The hair follicle shape determines whether your hair is one of the four main types, straight, coily, wavy, or curly. Like 12 musical notes make an infinite amount of music, there are 12 types at the root of every hair type created. Hair type is based on the hair's curl pattern. The amount of curl is determined by the hair follicle. And these primary types are divided into 12 subcategories of hair. Learn how to draw these 12 types of hair and you will be able to draw any hairstyle, past, present, and future. You're thinking right about now, you can't count, I only see nine. Have patience, all will be explained. First, we'll look at the straight type of hair. This type of hair has no curl at all. Individual strands may be fine, coarse, thick, or thin, but they hang without waving from root to tip. First is completely straight hair. This is hair with a flat, thin texture and little to no body. It will be shinier because the natural oil in the hair travels straight down from root to the tip. Next type is straight with some texture. This hair is straight, yet not as flat and has a medium texture. It has more body and texture than straight hair. It can hold a curl when it is styled. Often this hair type even has curled or flipped ends. Next is straight with soft bends. This is the one that has the most body and soft bends. It is loose in texture. Now let's look at the coils hair type. And I'm saying coils, not curls. This is not a Brooklyn accent, coils. In this category, we have to look at natural hair to understand it because when you draw it, it may look the same for all three types of curls and one type of coils when it is in its natural state. Here we see the lock of hair from an afro. We can see a springy S curl. Let's look at that from a few different angles. This was cut from the edge of an afro, where you can see it is stretched out and two separate coils are clearly visible. The other hair in between is more subtle. However, they are still coiled. Now let's understand the coils better with this phone cord, this antique phone cord. The coils can be compressed tightly or at rest. These are the normal states of the coils in the hair. You can only see the S curl or Z curl when it's stretched out. This usually only happens at the edge of an afro or when the hair is styled. We're going to come back to how to draw this later. For now, here's an explanation of the three types of coils. You have dense, springy, tight coils. The curl pattern is springy, S-shaped coil you could wrap around a chopstick. The tight coils, when stretched, reveal an S pattern. The curls are usually cylindrical and springy in nature. This hair has a more defined curl pattern and is looser than other coil types. Next is zigzag curls. This hair has a zigzag shape or is shaped like a Z. This hair type takes on more tight and crimpy textures that when stretched out form more of a Z instead of an S. The hair bends at very sharp angles. The ends of the hair shaft usually have a more clearly defined pattern than the roots. Next we have curls with zigzag pattern. These hair curls are the tightest and have a zigzag pattern. This hair is different from other types of coily hair as it consists of zigzag pattern loops that usually show very little or no definition at all. Next we have the wavy hair type. First in this category is tousled with stretched S waves. This hair has graceful beach waves. It is mainly straight near the scalp. The wave structure appears near the eye level. Then we have S-shaped waves. The hair curls from the midpoint to the ends. It is flatter at the roots and has a more distinct S-curl pattern starting around the eye area. Finally in this category we have wavy hair with some curls. The most well-defined S-shaped waves begin close to the crown and tumble downward. This hair is often thick 
and has some spiral curling. This means the waves are very tight and curl around themselves, which add a bit of bounce to the hair. More bounce to the ounce. And the final category of hair types, even though this is in no particular order, is curly type hair. We have large loose curls. These are S-shaped curls that form loose loops. The lack of tightness gives the hair more shine. Then springy and bouncy ringlets. This hair has a medium amount of curls, ranging from loose bouncy spiral ringlets to tight spiral shaped corkscrew curls with volume. These curls have a circumference almost the width of a Sharpie marker. Curls originate from the roots and have ample volume. Then we have tight corkscrews. These curls are tight and springy. They would coil to fit perfectly around a drinking straw or a pencil. This hair type consists of tight and highly textured curls and has lots of volume. Curls are reasonably defined. However, they are not as smooth as the early curly hair types. We would rarely be drawing this type of hair and coily hair this close up as we see on the left. We will usually be drawing it from a distance as seen on the right. We will be scribbling inside and making it more distinctive on the edges. We'll look at this process a little later. The look is basically the same from far away for this hairstyle and some coils. The way to tell the difference is mainly at the edges as we saw with natural hair earlier. Also, you may notice a person may have different curl patterns on other parts of their head if you're doing some observation or research on your own. It's always good to observe from real life to learn. Now, if you're not drawing a live person's portrait, then you don't have to worry about it. And you can keep things simple and consistent in your own drawings. The construction is your foundation and will usually be the same no matter what medium or style you are using. We always start with a sketch of the head. Determine the light direction. Establish the hairline. Then find the volumes of the groups of hair. Analyze the locks. You're thinking about the planes at this point, even though you're not really drawing them in, but you do want to think ahead. But sometimes you can draw them in at this point. In any case, you need to simplify the shapes. You draw the contour of the hair. The hair wraps around the head. This is the basic shape of the hair, the beginnings of the hairstyle. Now draw the locks of hair. Establish the flow of the hair. Draw the planes. One of the best things I ever did that I never wanted to do was to take a sculpture class. I started thinking about the shapes and forms and contours for the first time. Now some artists skip the sketching stage and go right to the painting and use actual paint as their sketch. You know, that's fine. There's no right or wrong to either approach. It's what you're comfortable with and how you're seeing it in your head. Because if you can see clearly in your head what you want to draw, then you could be drawn with a twig and come out with something great. Pencil techniques. Sketch the head. In this case, I'm just using real pencil, mostly throughout. Determine the light direction, 
establish the hairline, draw the contour to here. Find the volumes of the groups of hair. Analyze the locks. Simplify the shapes. Establish the flow of the hair. Now draw the planes. A study of Greek statues will show you precisely how planes are created for hair. Now medium values have the most visible texture and I'm using a taper pencil with 22 density here. Now add shadow. Shadow is always going to have less texture. And deep shadows create the separations between the locks. So here I'm using a real and darker pencil and a G-Pen with transparent mode. Now with pencil, you're already drawing with the intent of leaving highlights open. But let's say you're drawing and you're going to add some white pencil to it. Then this will be the point you will add highlights. And highlights are lighter and have non-existent textures in most cases. Line techniques. As always, we would begin with a sketch of the head, then determine the light direction, establish the hairline, and contour of the hairstyle. Draw the volume, analyze the locks, think about the planes. Yes, even an afro has planes. Draw the locks of hair. The first layer of scribbles is the base value. I'm using G pen here. Next, add medium values to define the planes. Add dark shadow. These will have less texture. Also add the strands of hair on the edges. Highlights may or may not be added depending on the lighting. Manga techniques. Now there are many ways to draw the hair in manga. This is only one of them. Sketch the head as always. In this case, we're going to determine the origin point of the hair. And usually the origin point is where most people start growing bald. So it's usually at the top of the head. In other cases, maybe where the part is. So we draw the contour of the hair. The hair wraps around the head. This is the basic shape of the hair, your hairstyle. Now we draw the locks of hair, the side on the light source, and choose your color palette. Use base flat medium value first. Lock to transparency. Lay down a medium gradient. Lay down shadow areas with a soft brush. Use shadow colors at light opacity for precise shadows and blur the extremities. Then make pointy hair strands with strokes. Finally add your highlight color. Painting techniques. Sketch the head. Now some people do a pencil sketch or start painting directly. Establish the hairline. Find the volume of the hair. Draw the contour of the hair. The hair wraps around the head. This is the basic shape of the hair. What will become the hairstyle. When painting, you want to choose your colors ahead of time. So make yourself a color palette that includes a light value, a low light value, medium value, shadow, and dark value. These are not official designations, but you should have five values, and this is what I am calling them. Lay down medium base color, lay down shadow areas, add shadow details, the shadows create separation between the hair to give it depth. Now, Throughout, I've been giving you and will continue to give you a very linear way of working in step-by-step -step fashion. But in actuality, when you're drawing a painting, you're going to be going back and forth between these steps. So at one point, you may be drawing the locks of hair, and then you go to the planes and start adding some texture. But then you may see you may need, need to go back and continue drawing more locks of hair. So don't feel badly if you don't follow these steps precisely because it's not a precise linear way of working. It's how the artist wants to work and you'll be bouncing around all over the place. 
low light values for locks of hair. Finally, create highlight. The beard. I'm using the darker pencil in normal and transparent mode here. Draw the edges, which is around the chin. And you want to follow the planes of the face when you're doing your strokes. And in this case, you are trying to draw individual hairs as it gets closer to the skin because the hairs are shorter, closer to the face. The, the hairs get longer, the farther from the skin. Because that's how beards grow. Drawing the beard is similar to drawing the hair on the head. The exception here is that where it is close to the skin is when you're actually trying to draw individual hair strands. This would depend on how the beard is cut. You'll see more with a close shave than with a full beard. Or the beard may fade from the skin to full growth. And we are done. Understanding how hair flows in the different types will allow you to draw from imagination when you need to do that. Because when you're drawing comics and have deadlines, you don't have time to reference every single thing. You need to have a mental file to draw on from your head. Well, that's all for today. If you've learned something today that has value to you, please like, share, and comment. I'd like to hear from you. And subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And remember, just create.